Welcome to Model Monday here at the Monster Makerspace. Uh, today we have uh, Chris, our Christmas project of the year. Uh, we only do one of them. I, I could do, probably do Christmas projects all year long. Christmas is great. Uh, but we're just going to do one this year. So uh, we're going to make snowflake cookie cutters. Um, and uh, it's a beginner friendly class. So as such, let's go ahead and kind of start with an overview of the drawing environment before we jump in and start modeling a snowflake. Um, I actually have a little arts and crafts project for us to do uh, for a snowflake iteration. And um, other than that, let's just get started. So I am gonna start a new document here. Um, and I create a new document, I should get my my magical pointer tool out here. I'm going to create a new document. Fusion 360 is a tabbed working environment. So up here at the top, I've got a couple of tabs open. And we start a new document just by hitting the little plus button up there in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new document. And and this is the, the blank slate here. So um, just a couple of things right off the bat. Over on, or right at the top, are all of our tools. So we've got a whole bunch of tools in our Create menu. In general, we will work from right to left from, with these tools at the top. So we'll start with things in the Create menu, and then maybe we'll take those things and we'll um, modify them in the Modify menu. Uh, we actually won't do any of this today. Um, and sometimes we'll, we'll take those modified items and assemble them into components and groups. Um, but again, that's kind of a more advanced topic. Today we're, we're basically just going to be making some sketches. Um, as we start to create things, two things are going to happen. So uh, here's our browser in the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and we've got a component that is empty. There's nothing in it. Uh, and our component right now is called unsaved. So a component is kind of a folder full of sketches and bodies. So sketches are like two-dimensional objects and bodies are like three-dimensional objects. And a component is kind of like a folder for all those things to live. Um, as we start to create things, we'll, we'll start to see this area grow. So as we create two-dimensional sketches, uh, I'm just going to open up this folder here for prepping for class. As we uh, create two-dimensional sketches, we'll have a sketches folder that pops up here. And in our sketches folders will be uh, each of the individual sketches that, that make up our design here. Um, as we take those two-dimensional sketches and turn them into three-dimensional bodies, We'll have a bodies folder that pops up here. And then in that bodies folder will be all the three-dimensional objects that make up our, our document here. Uh, you'll notice that my sketches and bodies are named. This is important for organization. You, your, your future self will like you more if you name your stuff now uh, versus guessing what they are later. Um, and we'll get into that. The other thing that will happen as we start drawing here, uh, in addition to our browser populating, is down here we've got a feature timeline. And right now this feature timeline is completely empty because we haven't done anything yet. But as we start to create things, along with our browser populating, our feature timeline will, will will start to populate. And this is kind of like a series of steps that I took in order to get from the beginning where I had nothing to, to where I'm at now. Um, so I made a sketch, I made an extrusion, I made another sketch, and then I made two more extrusions. Um, and because Fusion 360 is what's called a parametric environment, that means we can go back in time to where, where I was when I was doing this step and, and we could change something about this extrusion. Uh, we could modify it in some way, shape, or form. I could say, hey, I want to edit that feature and I want to change it from an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And if I'd made that change, when I come back into the present, 
down in my feature timeline down here, that change is reflected in my, in my updated design. Um, navigation, basic navigation in Fusion 360 um, happens in this top right hand corner. This is our navigation cube. So uh, I think this is 90% of, or maybe 75% of people's struggles as a beginner is figuring out how to move around the three dimensional world, right? Right? I see head nodding. Um, you're where you need to be. You're doing all right. Uh, so the navigation cube up here, the way it works is you can hover over it and then anything that highlights blue, uh, it'll be a little easier for me to see in this drawing where I've actually got something going on. Anything that highlights blue, I can click on it and I can spin around to that side. I can click on an edge or I can click on a corner because they highlight blue. Um, I can click and drag on anything that highlights blue and I can move around in a little bit more of a finite way. There are some tools at the bottom that I don't really use a whole lot, but I support your choices if, if these are your jam. There's an orbit tool. The orbit tool does the same thing as this navigation cube. Uh, there's a pan tool, so the hand tool just kind of moves left or right or up or down. And then there's a zoom in and zoom out tool for zooming in and zooming out. Um, I don't really find myself using those. My, my trackpad on my mouse, I can use two fingers to zoom in and zoom out. Um, if I hold shift, is it? And I, I don't really find myself panning very much. But it's really like zooming into an area, um, doing whatever work I need to do, zooming out, and your mount, you will zoom in or out of wherever your mouse is located. So if I want to zoom in over here to this area, if I put my mouse over there, I can zoom in to that area, and I can zoom out from that area, and if I want to zoom into this square up here, I can move my mouse up there, and then I can zoom into that area. The last thing before we start a new document is if you get totally lost and you can't find your thing and you're zooming in and you're zooming out and you're like, where, where's my drawing? Um, up here in the top right hand corner, there's a, little, there's a little home icon. If you hover over that navigation cube, it'll appear. And if you click on that little home icon, it'll take you back to where your model is. So you won't be completely lost. In, in like a pile of snow. You're just adrift in the snow over here. And if you hit the home button, you'll, you'll be nice and warm and cozy. All right, cool. So, any questions so far? All right, let's make a drawing. All right, but before we make a drawing, uh, today our project is a uh, snowflake cookie cutter. So, um, I, I love cookies. Christmas cookies are the best. And um, we're going to make our snowflake cookie cutter in the same way that I used to make snowflakes out of paper um, when I was like seven years old, right? So so here, here's the trick. Um, we'll fold our piece of paper in half. All right. And everybody's got a square. I made sure of that. So now you got a rectangle, and we'll fold it in half like this. Almost, you're, you're gonna, you'll get there, no worries. Nice. And then we're gonna fold it in half again. So now we've got, we've got a quarter of what we had here. All right, and then we're gonna do it one. Actually, should I make it a circle now? No, we'll, we'll do it one more time. So now I'm gonna fold it in half one final time. And uh, I'm folding it so I've got the two flaps over on this side and I've got a single flap over here, right? So we're gonna fold it in half one more time like that. 
And now we've only got one scissors in this class. Um, but now, if I were to take this and I were to make some cuts in my piece of paper here, unfold my piece of paper I've kind of got the mirror image of that, of that cut going on all over the place uh, I will pass around the scissors and you can cut out your snowflake if you would like to uh, but this is kind of the basic principle that we're going to be drawing here so we really only have to draw this and then we'll mirror it a bunch of times so there's a mirrored image and then there's a mirrored image again and then there's another mirrored image and then we'll have our cookie cutter shape we're actually probably going to start with a circle uh, when I did this earlier in class uh, or earlier to get ready um, I started with a circle instead of a square and uh, liked the results that I was getting better um, so yeah well like I said sorry we only have one scissors also, sorry, some of you have yellow snow. <laughs> sorry. Sorry in advance. All right. So, uh, knowing where we're going helps. And we are going to start our project in our new document here by creating a sketch. So, uh, Fusion 360 is, is fantastic. Um, I think it's really beginner friendly because if you've never used a tool before, if you just stop moving your mouse and you just hover over the tool here in your in your menu, it, it'll tell it gives you one of these wonderful tool tips. So uh, the tool tip tells me in the first paragraph what the tool is. Um, so it enters sketch mode where you can create geometric profiles that define the foundation of a design. And then in the second paragraph, probably more importantly, it tells you how to use the tool. So if you're going through and trying to figure out how these tools work and, and what they do and how to use them, um, then these tool tips, if you hover over them, that second paragraph will give you some good, good insights there. All right, so I'm gonna click on Create Sketch. And again, if I'm not sure what to do, I can just stop moving my mouse. It says, hey, I'm supposed to select a plane or a planar face. So uh, this is a three-dimensional world that we're looking at, right? And we can't just start drawing out in the middle of the room, like in this room we're in, we can't just start drawing in the air. We need a piece of paper to draw on. And these three surfaces here are like imaginary pieces of paper that we get to start off with. So uh, like the floor and the walls in this room, we could just start drawing on the wa walls and the floor of this room these pieces of paper are there for us to, imaginary pieces of paper or planes are there for us to choose. Um, it doesn't really matter a whole lot which plane you choose. I'm going to choose the plane in between my green and my red axis. This is my top plane. And a little tip if you want to make sure you're, you're looking at your like top down view plane, what you can do is you can come over to your navigation cube up in the top right hand corner and I can click on the word top. And now I'm looking straight down at that plane. So I won't accidentally pick a different plane by mistake. Cool? Cool. All right. So now you will notice all of our tools have changed at the top. So we used to have three-dimensional tools up here at the top, and now we have our two-dimensional tools. The menus are called the same thing, except for the constraints menus. Um, so our, all of our tools are now two-dimensional drawing tools up here. And, and that's because we're, we're what's known as editing a sketch. So uh, a sketch palette appeared over here in the right-hand side of my screen. There it is right there. Um, so we're, we're in our two-dimensional editing a sketch mode here. 
and all of our tools are now sketching tools so if we come up to the create menu you'll find all of your drawing tools and let's go ahead and start by making a center diameter circle um, the center diameter circle is really going to help us define kind of the size of our cookie cutter. So how big of a cookie do you want to make is what you're determining right now. Uh, I will let you choose the size that you want to make your cookie. So if I click, I probably should have explained that a little better. Um, in my circle tool, I choose that center diameter circle. And then if I just stop moving my mouse, it says, hey, you're supposed to place the center point of the circle. Um, as a rule, it's a good practice to have part of your sketch connected to this origin point, this middle here, um, without getting too into the weeds. In order to have a sketch that is kind of fully defined, it has to be locked in position as well as in size. And the easiest way to have it kind of locked in position right off the bat, uh, here you can see if I make a two inch circle over here my circle is blue and that is because it's not it's not really fully constrained i can move it around here if i make that same two inch circle in the middle my circle is black and that that tells me that it is fully constrained um, most of the time this is our goal is to have fully constrained sketches i can't just click and move this around willy-nilly uh, when you make changes to things later they will move a little bit more predictably if uh, if we have fully constrained sketches so that was a little bit more into the weeds than we needed to do but it's a good idea to have things something in your sketch should be connected to that center point there all right so i'm going to place the center point of my circle just by clicking one time so, uh, yeah. metric to ah freedom units um, that is a good question, and, and the way you do that is in document settings up here. Um, you can hover over where it says units, and then there's a little icon that will appear next to that. Um, in this class, we recognize that there is a standard unit of measurement that literally most of the world uses, um, except for the freest countries. And just for the record, the freest countries are the United States, Myanmar, and Liberia. Um, so I tend to think in freedom units uh, because I was raised by the public school system. But if you want to draw in millimeters um, and join the rest of the international community. I just don't know cookies in millimeters. Th that's, a, that's a fine point. I don't think they have cookies in Europe. I think they're uh, outlawed in the EU. So... It'll automatically like convert whatever that is in inches to the millimeters in your thing. Yeah. If you didn't want to keep millimeters. So here I'm drawing in inches, but I can just type in like uh, 30 centimeters, which is way too big for a cookie. Still only 12 inches. Yeah. That's enough for a cookie. That's um, a cookie but does. I think a good size for a cookie is probably like three and a half inches. That seems a bit small. For does a it? Cookie. Just for like a little sugar cookie? Yeah, yeah, the best cookies are at least this big. <laughs> you can draw your cookie however big you want to draw your cookie. That, that is the main takeaway from this. So I'm going to make a four inch cookie. But if you want to make a, the world's largest cookie, you will probably have a hard time 3D printing it, uh, 3D printing a cookie cutter. But I don't know how big is our 3D printer bed? Probably seven and a half inches. So you can make up to seven and a half inch cookie cutters? I think it's a little over that. It's eight something or nine something. It could 22, be. 22, I think. 20 by 22. In, in centimeters? Yeah, so we have to switch page. back? We have to switch back to metric? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just going to click and place that measurement. Um, so now I've got my four inch circle. Um, this measurement here I can click and drag on this and I can place this wherever it makes sense. 
Um, sometimes I like to have my circle measurements kind of placed outside of the circle. I just think it's a little easier to read, uh, especially because we're going to be drawing some lines inside the circle. And I don't want to mistake the line of my measurement for a physical line in this circle here. So you can click and drag and place these measurements wherever is convenient. Let's go ahead and draw a couple of lines. And after we draw a couple of lines, we'll come around and take a look at how we're doing here. So from our Create menu, we're going to go ahead and choose the Line Tool. And again, if you've not used the Line Tool, it creates lines and arcs, apparently. But I don't know how you create an arc with a Line Tool. So we'll just create a line here. And I'm going to draw three lines. So each of these lines is going to start at the center point of my circle. So I just have to click and place the beginning of the line and then move my mouse up. So it's a click, release, and move, not a click and drag. And then I'm going to place the second point of my line on the edge of my circle. So I can tell I'm right on the edge of my circle um, because I can see that I've got the little X option there. Um, that's telling me that I'm snapping to an edge. That little blue X up there. And I'm going to draw two more lines. So I drew a line straight up. I'm going to draw a line straight to the right. And then I'm going to draw one last line. Now, a line has two measurements to it. Um, we haven't needed to mess with a measurement because we're, we're snapping to a, to a edge. So um, that measurement is kind of like already defined by our circle size here. The second measurement of our line is the angle that it is at. So you can see off to, over here, there's a little angle um, measurement here. And to bounce back and forth between two measurements, you hit your tab key on your keyboard. So if you hit tab, you can see your uh, highlighted text will jump back and forth between the degrees that that line is at and the length that it is. Um, and we want this line, uh, for me, it's going to be 135 degrees. Uh, we want to make a 45 degree line, basically. so. Uh, at this particular angle, uh, it's 135. 135. 135 is it put it in the right spot for me. Um, but it could be that 45 would, would work for you as well. In fact, 45 does work for me. If I just type in 45 and move my mouse into this quadrant, it also works just fine. And then I'm also going to click and place that line right at the edge of my circle. And then I'm going to come around and see how I do it. Anybody choose to make a really big cookie? You get it? It's not too late. Just saying. Treat yourself. Uh, that tab key is, is uh, will be in your future if you're making sketches. So. Uh, like a rectangle has two different measurements. It's got a length and a width. And that tab key will get you back and forth between uh, any two measurements that are part of a single sketch tool. Cool. Nice. Very nice. Almost. We actually want our... So we can either do, we can do one of two things. We can move the, this line so over to the other side. So is this line connected? It with? should be, yeah. It should be. So we want that all the way to the edge. And uh, actually, where it says 135, if you zoom out. Uh, here, tell you what, we have, we, this is a teachable moment. Teachable moment. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Hold on. Uh, so two things. Let's say our, our, our angled line isn't where we want it to be. We've got a measurement that's associated with that. So 
Uh, it may be very close to your circle, so the measurement could be, it might look like this. Well, you just see a 45 there. But if you click on that 45 and drag it a little bit, you can see that it is a measurement there. And you can double click on that measurement and you can change it to be whatever you want it to. So uh, if, if your drawing looks more like this right now, or you, you got two, two lines like this, and we got a 45 over here, we want our 45 to go right in between our two lines. So we can, if I change this 135 to be 45, then we're good there. And the other thing that we'll notice here is, um, and that will probably be important later, is as I hover over the little segments, my little pie-shaped segments, I can click on them and highlight all the, just the segment alone. Right? Uh, it could be that if you're highlighting more if when you click you can't highlight just one segment here it could be that a line isn't connected all the way in order to connect your line you can use a special tool so inside of our constraints menu here um, a constraint is a rule about how the sketch about the sketch. So we can add a rule here to our sketch. And the rule that we want to use is the coincident rule. So um, the coincident rule says that hey, these two things are right on top of each other. Cool? So if our, we've got a line that's not touching here. <laughs> We can come up to our constraints menu and then choose this coincident option. And I'm going to pick uh, zoom in so I can see that my the space, the little gap between my line and my circle. And if I click on the end point of my line and then I click on my circle, they will, in theory, join right up. And, you know, it could be that your lines are touching. And, uh, you, like I said, you know your lines are touching because you, if you hover over the segments, you, it only highlights a little bit right in there. Wake up, Nick! Yeah. How does it work? How do you make the donuts? How do you do um, Yeah, I just tried to do that constraint thing. fun part. Um, so now I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to grab from my create menu, I'm going to choose to make this all with a bunch of lines, I think. Uh, if you wanted to, you can make this with some arcs if you wanted to get fancy. Um, but I think lines are going to do us right. And um, really, th this is kind of like the free form part of this class here. So uh, I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna cut maybe uh, down like this, and then I'll make a little point up to the side there. And I'm not really entering in any dimensions for this. Um, there is a time and a place to enter proper dimensions, um, and like maybe making a, a snowflake is not that time or place. Um, because these are blue lines, I can click and drag on these items and I can um, make alterations to them just by moving them around here because they haven't really been defined 
by a particular size. And I'm just going to place some, some lines. Uh, you could place angled lines like this right here. Um, you could make what, this, these are kind of like the cuts that we make, right? So going back to our analogy of, of the paper cut, right? Um, this is the shape that we're looking at, basically. Uh, it's a circle. Actually, this is the shape we're looking at, technically. And we're just going to kind of place some cuts randomly in our, in our sides until we're happy with the design. And uh, don't panic, because we'll be able to change these later. So, if I do maybe a little, a little something like that maybe, and then maybe down here I'll put a little one of these, and then I'm going to come and take a look at the fun shapes that you guys are making. That is the shape that I'm going with. And again, um, a key part here is if I take my mouse and I hover over this area, I should be able to just click inside of it and just highlight just this area here. Um, so your lines need to be fully connected there. No rush, we got time. So like, if the tool's kind of like in your hand is how I like to think about it, mm -hmm. um, and then escape will flip the tool away. Oh. Yeah. And we only need to do one quadrant. Oh, okay. Um, I, I guess you could do more than one quadrant if you wanted to, but eventually what we're going to do is we're going to mirror it over each of our lines. Uh, not one quadrant, one eighth. Okay. One pi segment. I will delete the other one. I mean, you're the boss of you. So if you want to make a snowflake that's a quadrant duplicate instead of an eighth duplicate, that, that's totally cool. Uh, how we doing? Uh, okay. Cool. I, li I like it. We got a little arc in there. That's cool. You can leave your arc. That's a cool cut. I like it. Um, I'll draw one more, one more quadrant here, just so you can see another, some more options here. So if I draw another eighth segment over here, um, you could certainly grab and use and experiment with like something like the three point arc tool. So in the arc menu here, there's a three point arc tool. And you could use that three point arc tool to, uh, you click and place the start point of your arc and then you click a second time and place the end point of your arc. And you could certainly make an interesting snowflake shape just by placing several arcs. You know, and have a shape like that that we end up mirroring.
Okay. As long as you can click on that and go measurement, and you can just hit the delete key. Did you hit the X key at all in your phone? Mm -hmm. So um, there's a couple of different kinds of lines that you can make. Mm -hmm. um, so you can make solid lines like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you open up your little sketch pad, there are two other things. There is a construction line. Mm -hmm. um, a construction line is a dashed line. Um, but it's a line that would not divide your sketch. So like the blue lines here and the black lines, they, they divide it into segments there. Mm -hmm. um, a construction line does not divide it into different segments. If that makes sense. And then again, it's like a not quite connected line somewhere going on. with our shapes all right so if we are happy with our shapes um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, which one should I make should I make the curvy one or should I make the angled one what do you think curvy or angled angled all right so I'm gonna delete this and we're just gonna roll with the angled one. All right, so to fill out the rest of our um, our circle here with these shapes, we have to use the mirror tool. So from our create menu, if we choose the mirror tool, and now if I go through, and actually what I can do here is um, I can click and drag and select all of these lines here all at the same time. So I can go through and individually pick one at a time each one of these lines. Or if I click and drag, um, there's actually two ways that you can use this, this click and drag tool. So I can click and drag from top right to bottom left. And you'll see I've got a blue outline with a, I'm going to call this an orange box. And the way that it works in that direction is it will select only the things that are fully enclosed with inside of that box. So you'll notice it did not choose the circle. It did not choose this line because they weren't fully enclosed in that box that I made. The other way to use this selection tool is if I drag from uh, bottom left to top right you see I've got a yellow box and a dashed line and that will select anything that it touches so I made my selection box the same size and you see now I because my selection box touched everything everything was selected um, so in this case dragging from top right to bottom left we'll select just the things that we want to select there. And now if we choose from our mirror window here, we choose the line that we're going to mirror it over. 
And I'm going to choose that 45 degree line. And you'll see we've got our first repeated segment there. Something that's kind of fun to note is um, a mirror is is technically a rule. So you'll notice that there are a bunch of icons that have appeared all over our sketch. Uh, these little icons here, these are kind of like um, the rule indicators of a mirror. So if I if I click on one of these you can see that it's mirrored one also highlights over here. Um, this is just kind of indicating to you that these are mirrored features. And um, what's kind of interesting is now I could change something about one of these lines and its mirrored line also changes. So you can see as I click and drag on this that mirrored line moves around. So as you start to see your snowflake shape kind of come take life here. Um, you could decide to make an alteration based on, you know, the the things you're seeing. If you'd like to see, oh, like when that line is doubled up, it gets real thick, and maybe you don't like that, or maybe you do. All right, I'm gonna do that two more times. So from my create menu. I'm going to go grab the mirror tool again. Except this time I'm going to highlight all of these things in this quadrant here. And I'm going to choose the line that I'm going to mirror it over as being either my bottom or, or my left line there. And then one last time. I'm going to grab the mirror tool again, and this time we're selecting that whole half. And after I mirror this over the, the middle there, I'll kind of come and look and see how you're doing. Um, so my shape, if I hold down the shift key, I can make multiple little selections at once so you can see. That is my snowflake shape, and I'm going to mess with here. Oh, please, cool, you got your first mirror done. So now, oh yeah, it looks like you've got your, you accidentally hit a button and you've got your whole tool up here. So if you just click cancel, and that'll go away. There you go. And now you can, there we go, now you're back to your sketching environment. It's good that you thought that, like, hey, something's different here. What are all my tools? Yeah, well now you can just kind of click and drag in this top corner. And drag and select all that stuff. There we go. Cool. And it looks like it didn't get a couple of them, so you can just click on it manually. Or you can just click on the little curves and get two little lines out of that. Cool. Cool. Perfect. Yep, you can just kind of go through and click on them. And that totally works. You got those mirrors over there. Very nice. I see that you did you exclude the like boundary line? Um I way? just I just shift clicked to make a whole bunch of selections. So oh, okay. um, just to so highlight like the shape that I drew. So yeah, if you hold oh. down the shift key you can make multiple selections. Okay. Um, just to illustrate. Because it's kinda hard to tell what mm -hmm. shape you got going on. Oh, That's pretty nice. I like your group. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's not here with all these things in the middle. Those are all the mirror, um, all the mirrors. So mine has that too. Okay. So there's just a ton of like mirrors all crammed in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just kind of all the because there's a lot of different lines that are being mirrored here, and they just kind of stack up on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we'll get rid of some of that visual clutter in the next step here. All right. Cool, cool, cool. 
and then you just got to do that a couple more times, right? Yeah, it didn't work when I did it. Try it again. And now look when I try to... Oh, so now here, pick, now he wants you to pick your, which line you're going to mirror it over. So now this is going to be a mirror line. There we go. And then it says you've got one selected. And then you can say, okay. Cool. Now you just got to do that one more time. So grab that mirror tool. And pick all of your sketch, sketch bits. where it says projects, <coughs> find selected. Click on that with your mouse. There you go. Now you can go through and keep picking your keep picking the items there. Dad, how much time do you Seems like not enough. Well, but so exactly. Where is it? What things do you have selected? What four things? I think you four. want to pick everything. So if you click where it says four, and now you want to pick all these other ones too. Do you have any other circles too? Can you do that? Or you can do the box thing like you just go on the highlight and drag it. Instead of picking the individual lines, here, let me show you a trick. If I, if I come up here, way off in the off to the side, and I just click and drag, and I can select all of them all at once. And then you can tell your mirror line. There you go. So you can click on that select option, and then you can choose that line down there. There we go. And you can say OK. And then we can try that one more time. So come up to your um, create and mirror tool again. Yep, exactly. And then if you start your mouse way over here, you click and drag. You come all the way down, all the way down. Keep going down lower. Perfect. And then you let go. There we go. And then you can choose your mirror line. Exactly. And then you'll want to choose one of these horizontal lines. Probably that black horizontal line right there. Um, quite a Try to choose that. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I, I guess you do. You want you want that line. There you go. Perfect. There you go. And then you can say okay. Cool. All right. So we've all got snowflake shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. Um. You finish a sketch, probably clicked on that too fast, by either clicking on the little finish sketch button in your sketch palette here, or the finish sketch icon in the top right in your tools up there. Let's 
So now that we've got our snowflake shape drawn, let's go ahead and extrude it out. So from our create menu, actually, let's do housekeeping. Uh, I, I don't want to underestimate how important this is. We've got a sketches folder here that appeared now that we've made a sketch. We've got a sketches folder and in it is a sketch that is terribly named sketch one um, because it doesn't know Fusion 360 does not know that this is a snowflake. So I'm going to go ahead and rename it to snowflake. And you rename it just by clicking on it and then pausing and then clicking a second time and then you can rename it All right, now that we've got that done, now from our create menu, we can come up to the extrude tool. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pick each one of my segments here that I wanna extrude. Um, so something that's important is that our, our lines have to be touching in order to create an extrusion. So if our lines aren't touching each other, if our lines aren't intersecting with each other, um, we won't be able to extrude out that shape. All right. And then I'm gonna enter in, it says, hey, zero. Um, I'm gonna enter in a, a thickness here that I'd like this extrusion to be. And I'm gonna go with, um, 0.125, which is a round number somehow in imperial units, because an eighth of an inch is totally a round number. Um, and I can use my navigation cube, and I can kind of look at this at a little bit more three-dimensional angle, and you can see that I, I am indeed extruding this upward here, that 0.25 inches. And then I'm going to say OK. So how did that go again, Carl? So from <laughs> so what I did is I clicked on create and then I went down to extrude. It's also the E key on your keyboard. Click create and then extrude. And after I choose the tool that I'm using, I, you can see I've got my extrude window that opened up here. Now all I have to do is go through and pick each one of my little eight segments, the little cutout bits from my little snowflake. And as I go through and click on them, uh, another profile adds to my profiles list here. So I've got six of them picked. Now I've got seven, and then there's eight of them. And for me, it's eight. Uh, for you, it might be a different number, but that's OK. Cool. And then uh, you can use the little blue arrow if you want to. Uh, I always encourage people that when they see numbers, they should they should embrace their, their inner nerd and type in numbers. Uh, but you can certainly use that little blue arrow to drag up and extrude that out. You can make it really thick if you want to do. Uh, but I'm going to go with an eighth of an inch, uh, which is 0.125. So pretty thin, um, which is probably thick enough. It's thick enough. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Once you donate, you hit OK and it's extruded. Mm -hmm. Can you go back and change it? Or? You sure can. That is a great question. So let's say, hey, I, I made this an eighth of an inch. Turns out I'm having second thoughts. I feel like it should be a quarter of an inch to give it some, you know, thickness. When you press it down in, you want to have some body maybe. So uh, remember I was talking about that feature timeline uh, at the beginning here. So these are the two things that we've done so far. We made a sketch and then we made an extrusion. And at any point, I can right click on uh, this item down here, this extrude item. And I could say edit feature. And what happens there when you when you're editing your features? Now you're going you're literally going back in time to when you made this. So if there were things that we did after this extrusion, 
you would no longer see those things. They wouldn't be visible anymore because we've gone back in time to when this is all we had. Mm -hmm. um, and now I can just change this number to something else. So I can change it to a half, uh, an eighth, sorry, a quarter of an inch if I wanted to. Um, you can also type in uh, one quarter, one, one divided by four. And that will also get you your measurement in there. Um, we are going to make one more sketch and one more extrusion. Are you guys cool staying like 10 minutes late? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if we go back and edit the sketch, does that get rid of the extrusion? That is a good question. It will not. So, um, in fact, be, I can still see my sketch here. Uh, if you can't see your sketch, there's a little um, eyeball next to your sketch in your sketches folder and you may have to like turn that back on um, but I don't even have to edit my sketch in order to change it if I click and drag on these lines I can change them and it automatically updates my body which is kind of neat so does that change the timeline as well? Or? Well, if you're changing it on your sketch, so it's kind of like doing the same thing as going back and changing your sketch and then coming into the future, only it just doesn't, doesn't make you actually take the step. Um, the only reason we can do this is because these lines, I can click and drag on them, is because they're, they're not fully constrained lines. So they're lines that we haven't given specific positions in space and in dimension. Um, if they had specific dimensions to them, we wouldn't be able to click and drag on them. We would have to go right click on the sketch and say edit feature or edit sketch. And then we'd have to double click on the line and change its dimension that way. Good questions. Thank you. So the next thing we want to do here is uh, we've got our cookie shape. We need to make it cut. Um, in order to make it cut, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. So I'm going to hide my sketch. I can still see my sketch here, um, and it's kind of cluttered, and I don't need to see it anymore. So in my sketches folder here, I'm just going to click on the little eyeball next to my snowflake sketch and just hide it. So I'm just going to turn it off the little eyeball there. Now, we're going to create one more sketch. So from our Create menu, if we come down here to Create Sketch one more time, in addition to those three drawing surfaces that you can create a sketch on, you can also create a sketch on any flat surface. So my uh, the surface of my snowflake here is, it happens to be a flat surface, and if I hover over it, you can see it highlights all around my snowflake here. And if I click on that surface of my snowflake, now I'm, I'm making a sketch on my snowflake here. And we just have to do one thing here from our modify menu. Um, the advantage of creating a sketch on a surface is you kind of get all of this existing geometry for free. So like all of these lines are technically there. It's not really showing you all those lines, um, but they, they exist. So from our modify menu, we can choose the offset tool. And now if I hover over the outside of my, um, my little snowflake here, it gives me a, a blue line. So I can select that as the curve I want to offset. And now instead of, now I've got this little blue pill and you can, I can click and drag on it and it moves that line either in or out. Um, I want to drag this line inwards. So it's on the inside of my of my object here 
Um, and I'm going to make this an eighth of an inch as well. It probably only needs to be 0.1. Let's go with 0.1. Negative 0.1 for me. Um, Uh, try hiding your other, your first sketch. Remove offset. And try cancel. And then finish your sketch. And then try it one more time. So uh, hide both of your sketches though over here so you don't accidentally click on one of them. And now if you say create, and then create a sketch, and you choose, there you go. And then you go up and grab your offset tool. Huh. Um, so option B, if you can't get that to appear, uh, if you can't get your geometry to appear there, is uh, from the create menu here we could come down to where it says project include and then we can come over to project and we could kind of manually make sure we put all those lines in there so if we choose this project option Yeah, we're coming in negative one. And then I'm going to say okay. Oh, yeah. I was having a similar issue. Oh, yeah. Like my uh, piece was in different segments. Like when I selected the, the plane to create the sketch. Oh, yeah. Uh, Should I turn off that sketch over there in the sketch three? Yeah, you can say finish. So your, the very first sketch you made, right click on it and say edit picture, or edit sketch. And then you can zoom in, um, and then you can make the middle edge there. So you can have a multiple lines there. Uh, if you click on this line, Sure, we're not doing anything. Yes. 
Control line. Okay, okay, so that was one more than we need. So you can undo. Control D. Yeah, Control D and Z. And then see if you have that going on like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that helps. So now I'm going to go ahead and say finish sketch. And now the last extrusion that we need to do here, if I come up to my create menu and I choose the extrude option, and I'm going to choose that outside edge there, and I'm just going to drag my mouse up. How thick should we make our cookie? Like a quarter of an inch? Is a good cookie thickness for like a sugar cookie. Um, so this is not a very effective cutting edge. And something that we can do with an extrude here is we can give it a taper angle. So I found that if I gave it a taper angle of about negative 12, actually it could be less than that, negative 10 degrees, then it gives it a nice cutting edge, kind of tapers in as it extrudes. Um, and then all I got to do is say, OK. And there is a cookie cutter. So now when you press down in this, um, if your cookie is a little bit thicker than a quarter of an inch, you'll get a couple of little raised spots, kind of depressions in your cookie will come up, and then it'll cut out the outside. And then you'll be able to go to Baking Town, and then just cover it in frosting and all the sparkly kind of sprinkles. That's what I put on this one. On the glitter sprinkles. The glitter sprinkles, yep, just a lot of glitter. 
Yeah. Mouthful of glitter is what you want when you're eating this cookie. Uh, it's like uh, you'd have to collect it, and um, uh, and I don't. I, that does not sound enjoyable. Yeah, there's that. All right, cool. So there was our cookie cutter project. We went a little bit over. Sorry about that, but we will we will not be here next week Monday um, because I because yes I I will be with my mother eating cookies. Cookies yep, we're, we're gonna have an, I, this is cookies. already printing at my apartment right now. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a cookie cutter to Ma's house, and, and we're, we're we're making cookies. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs>